Hello? Can everyone hear me? Good. So I flew halfway around the world from Seattle to be here. And I'll tell you what, I'll do it again. I had a dosa this morning. I had a dosa yesterday. And in fact, Sohan and I went out to dinner three times this week. I've had about 7,000 calories and hit the treadmill more than anyone here could imagine doing in a single week, right? Barely fit in this coat. And that was the more pragmatic half of me. I know what you might be thinking, right? How would eating that many calories be pragmatic? But I'll get there in a second. How many idealists do we have in the room? I want you to raise your hand if you're an idealist. Not a single hand went up. I'll tell you. Oh, we got a few. We got a few. I'll tell you. I am a tremendous idealist. I live my life in the ideal. I remember the first time my father asked me what I wanted to do, I answered and I told him I wanted to change the world. I wanted to change the world. So I'm surprised that not many hands went up because whether we are data scientists, engineers, executives, businessmen, academics, we are in a 100 square meter radius where we are changing the world. Now the ground underneath us is shifting, sure. But we are talking about a tremendous change in the space of the way that we as people will start to interact with technology. Well, let's see, is this the right button? Yes, it is. And we see this shift happen very regularly. We're not new to this. Right? About once every 10 years, we've seen this shift in interaction. Right? Does everyone remember punch cards? Does anyone here remember punch cards? You don't have to raise your hand if you're worried it's going to date you. But we at least remember terminals. And how about the advent of touch? The first time you took your fingers onto a mobile screen and you pinched and zoomed, or you slid. It took some time for us to adapt to that paradigm. Well, I'm about to tell you that we are entering a new paradigm in that direction, right? This paradigm of voice, this is the world that I live in, the world that we on the Alexa team breathe and eat. And this shift isn't just backed by our belief and our pursuits of this ideal, but it's backed by a lot of data and observation. Today, over 50 billion searches are done through voice per month. And MindMel's predicting that by 2020, over 200 billion searches per month will be done by the voice. That's almost 60% of the total volume. And this is in a large part because of the advances that we've made in ASR and NLU, um, right? The capabilities, the computational capabilities, just the sheer science has grown so tremendously in the past four to five years that it's really put us at a position of advantage to be able to develop these technologies. Which is why we believe that natural language interfaces are the next major disruption in computing, right? This is why we came up with the Alexa Skills Kit. Now, the Alexa Skills Kit is a way that abstracts the complexity of natural language understanding, and it abstracts the complexity of machine learning and, uh, and speech recognition, right, text-to-speech. And what happens is, this is kind of the behind the scenes of what happens when a customer interacts with Alexa, right? You have a customer, they speak, that audio is then streamed to the cloud where we do a ton of processing, right? Some speech recognition, some machine learning, natural language understanding. We pass it over to a service, right? Now this becomes very similar to application development, where a voice and utterance is mapped to an intent confirmation. The intent confirmation completes a service. Um, but to give you an idea of how hard this really is for the engineers that we have in the room, and I know that there's a lot of you, this is, this is very normal, but, but in text, it's so much easier to decipher the difference between one and one, right? Or two, two and two, or maybe eight and eight, or T and T, 
Right? I'm worried that if anyone's listening to the audio of this, uh, they are going to think that I'm crazy. But that is the challenge that comes with natural language understanding, right? Homonyms. And that's not all, but it's the way that we speak. When we go through this automatic speech recognition, we have constructed AWS services out of this. Um, but if I were to say something as simple as four miles, what does that mean? Am I talking about a distance, four miles? Or perhaps I'm talking about a tribute to one of the greatest jazz musicians that ever lived, Miles Davis. Or maybe I'm creating entire worlds and universes, and I'm commanding the continents beneath me to form isles. Or, you know what, I've made a few billion dollars because, hey, my Alexa skill went viral and I'm buying furniture for my isles, right? What do I mean when I say four miles? Well, our investments in Alexa have actually led to the creation of a lot of these services, right? These individual components. Um, over here, we've got Comprehend and Lex. Lex will help you make intelligent conversational interfaces. We have Translate, which will help you shift between languages. Uh, Poly, which will add a voice to text and transcribe, which will do the exact opposite, right? So it's possible to take single components and add them to your own business solutions that you're creating. But when we get back to skills, what we've done with skills is we've abstracted all that complexity and put it around a development kit that allows people to create applications through the voice that can be accessed through Alexa devices all over the world. And right now we have more than 60,000 skills. It is still the very early days of the voice application world, right? We have skills that can get you coffee, bring you pizzas. Um, we have Savan, which can help you play songs, right? We have Ask Ola to book a ride. You can tell Alexa this, and Ola will end up make, completing the transaction for you. We also have Zomato on it, right? So if we're looking for restaurants, which is a, such a common conversation to have. Right? These are three major applications that exist on the Alexa Skills Kit today. And Alexa is growing tremendously fast. Tens of millions of Alexa-enabled devices. And we're up nearly five times the number of customers. So if you haven't really started to think about how to take your applications, how to take your business solutions, and really start to consider how people might access these things through their voice, maybe it's time to do so. Right? And maybe it's time to join us in this worldwide effort to change things, and to be a part of what is going to be the next frontier. And with that, I definitely want to introduce you to some of your colleagues all around the world, pioneers in this space of AI. We started out with a small idea. We wanted to create the world's first interactive radio drama. We were mobile first to begin with. Luckily, Alexa came along. I remember, you know, I told my team, okay, I think we're gonna make a pivot here. I think we're gonna focus on Alexa. I have thousands and thousands of connects. And I'm like, why not try and learn Alexa and do something cool with the Raspberry Pi? I remember I spent almost an entire weekend doing it, like barely any sleep. My first skill is pretty simple. It's called Black History Every Day. Patricia Bath, first black woman to serve on staff. It started to work on April 3rd, 2017, which happened to be my 60th birthday. And I cried when it worked. I cried tears of joy. Tell unofficial Raspberry Pi car to move the car forward. The car is moving forward. We are driving my car, but it's my voice. <laughs> SmartCap takes the images from the camera and it interprets what's in the image and then it narrates the scene to the visually impaired person through Amazon Alexa. Alexa, ask SmartCap to describe the scene. It is a desk with a monitor and a laptop computer sitting on a table. As soon as I saw the video of the person using the device, it was a eureka moment for me and the feeling from inside is like you are doing something good in life and it can help others to achieve what they want. One of the other projects I created, I called it Alexa in the browser. You could just go to a web page and you had a, a virtual 
Echo. It was just a, a white circle on the page. And it became a product called EchoSim.io, which is a Echo simulator. It's amazing, I, I go to events and I see people kind of developing Echo skills and they fire up EchoSim.io on their laptop and they just sort of talk to Alexa through that. And it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's running my code underneath. <laughs> We're on the cusp of a revolution, a voice revolution. Voice definitely is the most powerful medium, I can say, which can change the world. And now is the time to, to start learning this stuff and to get involved in it, because so many developers you look at and go, oh, if I could have gone back 10 years ago. As a result of the shift of voice, we've reached a much, much broader audience than we ever thought was possible. That is a much bigger future than anything that I had originally expected. <laughs>